Can you believe this nonsense? Zix Trill chittered, his antennae twitching with indignation. They're bringing in humans to lecture us on warfare. Humans. Those primitive apes who still use projectile weapons. Gloobnax, his gelatinous study partner, gurgled in agreement. I know, right? What could we possibly learn from a species that hasn't even mastered faster than light travel? It's like asking a Gribblesnord to teach quantum physics. The two alien students were huddled in the corner of the Grand Auditorium at the Galactic Military Academy, their voices a mixture of disdain and amusement. Around them, hundreds of other extraterrestrial cadets from across the Milky Way buzzed, squawked, and rumbled with similar sentiments. The Academy's headmaster, a towering, six-armed Nexuvian named Administrator Flox Zorb, floated onto the stage, his translucent body pulsed with bioluminescent patterns that signaled for silence. The cacophony of alien voices gradually died down. Esteemed cadets Flox Zorb's voice reverberated through the auditorium. Today we have the air privilege of hosting two human military experts who will share their unique perspective on adaptability in combat situations. The sarcasm in his voice was about as subtle as a supernova. Please welcome Captain Jack Morrison and Sergeant Elena Rodriguez of the United Earth Defense Force. Two figures strode onto the stage and a wave of whispers rippled through the audience. The humans looked comically small next to the administrator, barely reaching his lowest set of arms. Captain Morrison, a square-jawed man with close-cropped gray hair, stepped up to the holographic podium. Greetings, future defenders of the galaxy, he said, his voice gruff but surprisingly warm. We're here today to talk about a principle that served humanity well throughout our history adapt or die. Sergeant Rodriguez, a wiry woman with dark hair, pulled back in a tight bun, tapped a device on her wrist. A holographic display flickered to life behind them, showing scenes from various human conflicts throughout history. Now, I know what you're thinking, Morrison continued, a hint of a smirk on his face. What could these primitive apes possibly teach us about warfare well? Buckle up, buttercups. You're in for a wild ride. Zix Trill leaned over to Gloobnax. Did he just call us buttercups? What in the name of the cosmic egg is a buttercup? Gloob Nax's amorphous body jiggled in what passed for a shrug. Probably some earth plant. You know how humans are always comparing things to their flora and fauna. Meanwhile, on stage, Sergeant Rodriguez had taken over. Let's start with a little pop quiz. How many of you have heard of the Battle of Thermopylae? A few tentacles and appendages raised hesitantly. All right, for those who haven't, picture this 300 Spartan warriors holding off an army of over 100,000 Persians. Sounds impossible, right? Well, that's where terrain adaptation comes in. The holographic display shifted to show a narrow mountain pass. The Spartans used the terrain to their advantage, funneling the much larger Persian force into a narrow passage where their numbers meant squat. It's like trying to pour a gas giant through a straw ain't gonna work, folks. Made a ripple of confused murmurs spread through the audience. Zix Trill's mandibles clicked in confusion. What's a Spartan and a Persian? Are those different species of humans? Gloobnax oozed a bit closer to whisper, I think they're talking about some ancient human conflict. You know how obsessed they are with their history. Captain Morrison chimed in, now, I know what some of you are thinking. But Captain, we have energy shields and plasma weapons. What does an ancient battle have to do with modern warfare well? Let me tell you a little story about a plucky band of rebels and an empire that thought it was invincible. The hologram shifted again, this time showing a massive space station shaped like a small moon. This, ladies, gentlemen, and assorted other genders and non-gendered beings, is what we humans call a Death Star. Imagine the most powerful weapon you can think of, then multiply that by a factor of holy shit that's a Death Star. A few of the alien cadets leaned forward, suddenly interested. Now, conventional wisdom would say that going up against something like this with a handful of starfighters is suicide and conventional wisdom would be right if you're not willing to adapt. Sergeant Rodriguez took over again. The rebels in this scenario found a weakness a thermal exhaust port about the size of a womp rat. Don't ask what a womp rat is, it's not important. What is important is that they adapted their tactics to exploit this weakness, sending their best pilot down a trench run to fire a proton torpedo into the port. The hologram showed a small fighter weaving through turbolaser fire, then a massive explosion as the Death Star blew apart. Boom, Morrison said with a grin. Death Star go bye-bye. 
Zixtril's antenna twitched in confusion. Wait, are they talking about an actual battle or some kind of entertainment? Gloobnax gurgled thoughtfully. I'm not sure. With humans, it's hard to tell sometimes. Up on stage, the two human soldiers were getting into their stride. But adaptation isn't just about finding weaknesses in your enemy, Morrison continued. Sometimes, it's about turning your own weaknesses into strengths. Take the Trojan horse, for example. The hologram shifted to show a massive wooden horse. Picture this, you're a Trojan, sitting pretty behind your impenetrable walls. Along comes this giant wooden horse, a gift from the Greeks who've been besieging you for years. Do you look this gift horse in the mouth and burn it, or bee-drag it into your city for a victory party? Rodriguez chimed in, spoiler alert they chose B, and it didn't end well for Troy. A tentacled alien in the front row waved an appendage. Excuse me, but why would anyone accept such an obvious trap? Morrison grinned. Excellent question. You see, the Trojans thought they had adapted to the Greek siege tactics. They believed their walls made them invulnerable. But they failed to adapt to the Greeks' adaptation. It's like tactical inception, you've got to be ready for your enemy to adapt to your adaptations. The alien's tentacles curled in confusion. But let's fast forward a bit, Rodriguez said. Humanity's history is full of examples of adaptation in warfare. Take the Battle of Agincourt, where English longbowmen defeated a numerically superior French army by adapting to the muddy terrain. Or the Viet Cong's tunnel systems in the Vietnam War, adapting to counter-technologically superior U.S. forces. Morrison nodded. And it's not just about military tactics. Human technology has always evolved in response to military needs. The space race? That was just a thinly veiled arms race. We went from barely flying a kitty hawk to landing on the moon in just 66 years. Why? Because we had to adapt or die. At this point, Zix Trill had had enough. He stood up, his exoskeleton creaking in protest. This is ridiculous. You're talking about ancient conflicts and fictional battles. What does any of this have to do with modern galactic warfare? The auditorium fell silent. All eyes and various other sensory organs turned to the bold cadet. Captain Morrison's eyes twinkled with amusement. Ah, I was wondering when one of you would speak up. What's your name, cadet? Zix Trill of the Arthropodia Cluster, he chittered defiantly. Well, Zix Trill of the Arthropodia Cluster, let me ask you this, how did your species deal with the Zorkanian plague that swept through your sector about? Oh, fifty standard years ago. Zix Trill's antennae drooped slightly. We adapted our exoskeletons to filter out the pathogen. Exactly, Morrison exclaimed. You adapted or you died. And let me guess, that adaptation has since become a standard feature of your species' biology. Zix Trill nodded reluctantly. See, that's the beauty of adaptation. It's not just about winning a single battle or war. It's about evolving, about taking those hard-won lessons and incorporating them into your very being. Sergeant Rodriguez stepped forward, and that, cadets, is why we're here today. Because while you may have more advanced technology, while you may have been traversing the stars while we were still figuring out fire, humanity has one thing that served us well throughout our history we're really, really good at adapting. Morrison grinned. Or, to put it in terms you might appreciate, we're like the cockroaches of the galaxy. No matter how many times you think you've stomped us out, we always find a way to survive and thrive. A collective shudder ran through the arthropod section of the audience. Now Morrison continued, his voice taking on a more serious tone. Let's talk about a very real, very current threat the Void Swarm. The hologram behind them shifted to show a mass of writhing, shadow-like entities. These extra-dimensional beings have been pushing at the edges of our galaxy for the past decade. They don't use technology as we understand it. They don't have ships or weapons in the conventional sense. They are living weapons, capable of phasing through solid matter and consuming energy directly. Rodriguez took over. Standard energy weapons are useless against them. Projectile weapons pass right through them, force fields. They eat those for breakfast. So how do you fight an enemy like that? She paused for effect looking out over the now rapt audience. You adapt. The hologram shifted again, showing human soldiers wielding strange, almost organic-looking weapons. These are phase-locked plasma throwers, Morrison explained, developed by combining our understanding of plasma weapons with the Zorblaxian's quantum entanglement technology and the PSI Collective's psychic amplifiers. They're capable of affecting the void swarm in their phase-shifted state. 
Gloobnax's gelatinous form rippled with excitement. That's actually pretty impressive, he admitted reluctantly. Zix Trill, however, wasn't ready to concede. But surely the more advanced races of the galaxy could have developed something like that much faster than humans. Rodriguez smiled. You're absolutely right, cadet. The Zorblaxians or the PSI Collective could have probably developed these weapons given enough time. But here's the kicker they didn't think to do it, because they were too focused on trying to adapt their existing weapons and tactics. Morrison nodded. Humanity, on the other hand, has a long history of cobbling together solutions from whatever we have on hand. We're the galactic kings of duct tape and WD-40. This statement was met with blank stares from the alien audience. Ah, uh, that's... Never mind. The point is, we're not afraid to think outside the box because for most of our history, we didn't even know there was a box. Rodriguez continued, and that's what we're here to teach you today. Not specific tactics or technologies, but a mindset. The mindset that there's always a solution, always a way to adapt, no matter how dire the situation seems. Because let me tell you, Morrison added, his voice grave, the Void Swarm isn't going to politely wait for us to develop the perfect weapon or strategy. They're pushing harder every day, and if we don't adapt, we die, Rodriguez finished. A heavy silence fell over the auditorium. Zixtril found himself conflicted. On one hand, these humans were still primitive in many ways. On the other, they had a point. He glanced around the auditorium, seeing similar looks of thoughtful consideration on the faces and other sensory clusters of his fellow cadets. Morrison cleared his throat. Now, I know we've thrown a lot at you, and I know that for many of you, taking advice from humans feels about as natural as a gribble's nor taking a bath. This elicited a few chuckles from the audience, along with an indignant squawk from the gribble's nort section. But here's the thing we're not asking you to become human. We're not even asking you to fight like humans. We're asking you to take this core principle adapt or die and apply it in your own unique ways. Rodriguez nodded. Each of your species has its own strengths, its own ways of thinking and problem solving. The key is to be willing to combine those strengths in new and unexpected ways. To look at a problem from every angle, no matter how weird or unconventional it might seem. Because let me tell you, Morrison added with a grin, if there's one thing humans excel at, it's being weird and unconventional. This drew a genuine laugh from the audience, so Rodriguez said, who's ready to get weird and save the galaxy? But to everyone's surprise, including his own, Zixtril found himself raising a limb along with most of the other cadets. Excellent, Morrison beamed. Now, let's break into groups and start brainstorming. I want to see the craziest, most out there ideas you can come up with for dealing with the Void Swarm. And remember, there are no bad ideas in brainstorming. Well, except for Dave's idea about weaponizing pineapple pizza. But that's a story for another time. As the cadets began to move and form groups, buzzing with a new energy, Zixtril turned to Gloob Nax. You know he chittered thoughtfully. Maybe these humans aren't as primitive as we thought. Gloob Nax's body rippled in agreement. Indeed. Though I have to ask, what in the name of the cosmic egg is a pineapple pizza? Zixtril's mandibles clicked in amusement. I have no idea, but if it's weird enough to weaponize, maybe we should find out. And with that, the two alien cadets moved to join a group, ready to start thinking outside a box they'd only just realized existed. As the brainstorming session kicked into high gear, the auditorium filled with a cacophony of ideas, each more outlandish than the last. Tentacles waved, and tinai twitched, and gelatinous bodies jiggled with excitement. What if we created a psychic link with the void swarm and convinced them that our galaxy tastes terrible suggested a telepathic Crozian? Ooh or we could use quantum entanglement to swap their phase shift with solid rock, chirped a avian peep tweedle. How about we weaponize the concept of existential dread and make them question their life choices, rumbled a philosophical rock brain. Captain Morrison and Sergeant Rodriguez moved from group to group, offering encouragement and occasionally stifling laughter at some of the more creative suggestions. See, this is what I'm talking about, Morrison exclaimed. You're all starting to think like humans now. Crazy, improbable, and just maybe crazy enough to work. As the session wound down, Administrator Flock Zorb floated back onto the stage, his bioluminescent patterns pulsing with what might have been approval or possibly indigestion. It was hard to tell with Nexuvians. 
Well, he announced, his voice reverberating through the auditorium, I must say this has been enlightening. Perhaps there is something to be learned from our human friends after all. He turned to Morrison and Rodriguez. Captain, Sergeant, on behalf of the Galactic Military Academy, I thank you for this most unusual lecture. Morrison grinned. Trust me, Administrator, the pleasure was all ours. It's not every day we get to blow the minds of the galaxy's brightest military cadets. Rodriguez nodded in agreement. And who knows? Maybe one of these wild ideas will be the key to defeating the Void Swarm. As the cadets filed out of the auditorium, still buzzing with excitement and debating their newfound ideas, Zixtril and Gloob Nax found themselves lingering behind. You know, Zixtril chittered thoughtfully. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm actually glad I didn't walk out of this lecture. Gloob Nax gurgled in agreement. Indeed. Though I must admit, I'm still curious about this pineapple pizza weapon the humans mentioned. Perhaps we should investigate further. The two alien cadets approached Captain Morrison and Sergeant Rodriguez, who were gathering their holographic equipment. Excuse me, Captain Zixtril began, his mandibles clicking nervously. We were wondering if you could elaborate on this pineapple pizza concept. Is it truly as formidable a weapon as you implied? Morrison and Rodriguez exchanged amused glances. Well, Cadet Morrison said with a chuckle, that's a matter of rather heated debate among humans. Some swear by it, others consider it an abomination. Personally, I'm of the opinion that it's the perfect psychological warfare tool. Rodriguez rolled her eyes. What the captain means to say is that pineapple pizza is just a controversial food item, not an actual weapon. Although she added with a mischievous grin, I've seen it cause some pretty intense arguments that came close to interplanetary incidents. The Gloob Nax's gelatinous form rippled with confusion. So, it's a form of divisive propaganda. In a way, Morrison nodded sagely, but more importantly, it's an example of human adaptability. We took a traditional food, added an unexpected ingredient, and created something entirely new. Some love it, some hate it, but it certainly got people talking and thinking differently about pizza. Zix Trill's antennae twitched as he processed this information. I see. So the true weapon is not the pineapple pizza itself, but the concept of combining seemingly incompatible elements to create something unexpected. Exactly, Rodriguez beamed. Now you're thinking like a human. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, Zex Trill chittered, but there was a note of amusement in his voice. As they continued chatting, Administrator Flox Zorb floated over, his bioluminescent patterns pulsing rapidly. Captain, Sergeant. He began, his voice a mix of reluctance and urgency. I've just received a transmission from Galactic High Command. It seems the Void Swarm has launched a major offensive in the Orion Arm. They're requesting immediate assistance from all available forces, including including your human fleet. Morrison's expression turned serious. Understood. Administrator, we'll contact our superiors right away. He turned to the alien cadets. Well, looks like you'll get a chance to see human adaptability in action sooner than we thought. Zixtril and Gloobnax exchanged nervous glances. You mean, we're going into actual combat Gloobnax gurgled anxiously. Welcome to the real world, Cadets Rodriguez said grimly. Sometimes the universe doesn't wait for you to finish your training. Administrator Flock Zorb's body pulsed with what could only be described as a sigh. I'm afraid Sergeant Rodriguez is correct. All senior cadets are being called up to assist in the defense. Your training pods are being prepped as we speak. Morrison looked at the two alien cadets, his expression a mix of concern and determination. I know you're not ready. Hell, no one's ever really ready for their first battle. But remember what we taught you today. Adapt. Dot 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 or die Zix Trill finished, his voice surprisingly steady. As alarms began to blare throughout the academy, cadets of all species rushed to their assigned positions. The once peaceful halls of learning were suddenly transformed into a hive of frenzied military activity. In the hangar bay, Zix Trill and Gloob Nax found themselves being ushered into a sleek, multi-species compatible pod. Around them, other cadets were doing the same, their faces or equivalent sensory organs a mix of fear and determination. As the hangar bay doors opened, revealing the star-studded expanse of space, Captain Morrison's voice crackled over the comm system. All right, cadets. I know this isn't what any of us expected when we woke up this morning. But remember, humanity didn't get where it is today by backing down from a challenge. 
you've got the best training the galaxy has to offer, and more importantly, you've got each other. Use your strengths. Cover each other's weaknesses, and for the love of all that's holy, don't forget to think outside the box. There was a pause, then Morrison added, Oh, and if anyone figures out how to weaponize pineapple pizza against the Void Swarm, I'll personally recommend you for the Galactic Medal of Valor. Despite the tension, a ripple of nervous laughter ran through the comm channel. As the pods launched into space, falling into formation alongside the sleek human ships and the more exotic vessels of other galactic races, Zix Trill felt a strange mix of terror and exhilaration. You know he chittered to Gloob Nax, who was nervously oozing into the co-pilot's seat. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually glad we had that human lecture today. Gloob Nax gurgled in agreement. Indeed. Though I must admit, I'm still not entirely sure what a buttercup is or why the captain wanted us to buckle it up. Before Zix Trill could respond, the radar pinged ominously. On the view screen, a roiling mass of darkness began to coalesce, tendrils of void energy reaching out hungrily towards the assembled fleet. All units, this is Captain Morrison the con crackled to life. The void swarm is entering the system. Remember your training, watch each other's backs, and for God's sake, don't try to go one-on-one -on -one with these things. Stick to your squadrons and, wait, what in the name of? The comm fell silent for a moment. Then Rodriguez's voice came through, a mix of disbelief and amusement evident in her tone. Ah, uh, Captain, you might want to take a look at Cadet Six Trill's pod. All eyes and various other sensory organs turned towards Zix Trill and Gloob Nax's vessel. To their own surprise, their pod was emitting a strange, pulsating energy field that seemed to be repelling the nearby void tendrils. The cadet Zix Trill, report Morrison, barked over the comm. What in the blazes did you do? Zix Trill's mandibles clicked rapidly as he examined the pod's readouts. I, I'm not entirely sure, Captain. We were discussing the lecture, and I was thinking about how you said to combine unexpected elements and spit it out, cadet. Well, Sir Zix Trill chittered nervously, I think we might have accidentally weaponized the concept of pineapple pizza. There was a moment of stunned silence across all channels. Then, to everyone's surprise, Captain Morrison burst out laughing. Well, I'll be damned. I was joking about that, you know. As the void tendrils recoiled from Zix Trill and Gloob Nax's pod, other ships began to maneuver closer, seemingly protected by the strange energy field. All right, listen up, Morrison's voice rang out, now filled with renewed vigor. I don't know how, and I certainly don't know why, but it looks like these cadets have stumbled onto something. All ships form up around Zix Trill and Gloob Nax's pod. Let's see if we can expand this field and push back against the Void Swarm. As the battle unfolded, with the combined galactic fleet leveraging this bizarre new advantage, Zix Trill couldn't help but reflect on the strange turn of events. Here he was an alien cadet who had nearly walked out of a lecture by primitive humans, now at the center of a defense against an extra-dimensional threat, all thanks to a misunderstood Earth culinary controversy. You know, Gloob Naxi chittered as they maneuvered their pod through the chaotic battlefield, void tendrils dissipating against their improbable energy shield. I think I finally understand what the humans meant by adapt or die. Gloob Nax gurgled in agreement, his gelatinous form rippling with what might have been excitement or terror, it was hard to tell. Indeed, though I must admit, I'm rather looking forward to trying this pineapple pizza when all this is over. After all, if it's powerful enough to repel extra-dimensional horrors, imagine what it could do to one's digestive system. As the battle raged on, with the galactic fleet slowly but surely pushing back the void swarm, one thing became clear the universe would never look at humans, pineapple pizza, or the concept of adaptability quite the same way again. And somewhere in the chaotic swirl of combat, Captain Morrison's voice could be heard over the comm, equal parts amused and exasperated when we get back to base, remind me to update the lecture. Apparently, we need a whole section on how to accidentally save the galaxy with controversial Earth cuisine. The epic battle against the Void Swarm would go down in galactic history as the great pineapple pizza defense a testament to the bizarre unpredictability of human adaptability and the unexpected benefits of keeping an open mind even when it comes to questionable food combinations. As for Zix Trill and Gloob Nax, they would go on to become legendary figures in the Galactic Military Academy, known as the Pineapple Pair. Their story would be told for generations, 
a reminder that sometimes the most powerful weapon in the universe is the ability to think differently and perhaps to appreciate a good slice of controversial pizza.